Love, and yes, I am old enough to have a PhD. I obtained my PhD from the University of Florida, go Gators, uh, and now I'm with Biologic. So what brings us here together today? Well, we're starting a monthly video series um, talking about all different kinds of subjects. In particular, we're very interested in flow panel construction because if you're like me, uh, when you were a graduate student, you didn't really delve too much into multicolor flow. At max, I did around four or five colors. Um, but nowadays, we're talking about so many different things like emission and excitation spectra, compensation, spectral overlap, uh, spreading error. There's just so many new things and new floors coming out that we felt the need uh, to create this video series to help you guys out. And we'll also discuss additional scientific topics uh, just to keep you guys informed, uh, let you know what's going on. So what is the topic today? Well, today we're discussing fluorescent proteins. Uh, and I'm sure many of you already know, there are a lot of common fluorescent proteins, uh, such as APC, your PE, your FITCs, that are just sort of uh, been tinkered around with. But even before we started to mess around and create these floors, there are naturally existing uh, fluorescent proteins, uh, one of which is derived from a jellyfish named Aquaria victoria, uh, which is this little jellyfish guy right here. It's also fun to say. Uh, that's where we get our GFP from, so our green fluorescent protein, uh, which many of you are most likely familiar with. Uh, and since we discovered GFP, there's been a ton of variations, uh, your YFPs, your RFPs. Um, we've pretty much been able to create every single color of the rainbow, um, which you can see in this beautiful, nice little plate here. If you want to learn more about fluorescent proteins, feel free to go ahead and click on this image, uh, and it'll take you straight to our blog where we discuss how fluorescent proteins work and what they are, essentially. When it comes to uh, panel construction, Fluorescent proteins are more often commonly used in uh, reporter gene assays. And when I say reporter genes, what I'm referring to is, for instance, if you wanted to study IL-2, uh, you would take the IL-2 gene and essentially connect it to something like GFP. That way, when uh, IL-2 is produced by the cell, then you actually have GFP produced uh, as well, and then the GFP can easily be measured uh, in something like a flow cytometry assay. So when you start to insert these elements into your panel, it's a little more complicated than it might seem. Uh, for instance, GFP, you know, is a direct uh, fluorophore equivalent to what might be considered as FITC. So you might think, hey, GFP fluoresces is in the FITC channel, I just don't have to worry about using FITC. Uh, even though the excitation spectra don't seem to overlap that much with neighboring floors. For instance, take a look at our spectra analyzer over here. If you notice, uh, FITC, GFP don't seem to overlap too much with PE, so you might not think about it. The problem comes up though when you have unexpected high expression of those fluorescent proteins. If for one reason or another the GFP starts to get really bright or really highly expressed, um, even that tiny amount of overlap between uh, GFP and PE can start to get affected, and then your comp values can get a little out of hand. So it's just something like that that you have to be aware of. Now the best way I can demonstrate this to you is to show you a little bit of a panel here. And before you get started on panels, you might look like this little critter right here. Um, you don't have a direction that you're sure you should be going in. You're a little confused. Uh, but hopefully by the end of this little tutorial, you have gained a little bit of knowledge and understanding on how you might incorporate fluorescent proteins uh, into your panel. So in this panel, you can see in the left-hand column, is a list of a bunch of fluorescent proteins this person wants to incorporate into the panel. Your GFP, your CFP, which is a cyan fluorescent protein, and DS-RED. The middle column is what the marker of interest is. So in this case, it's a bunch of cytokines the person wants to look at. And finally, the last column, the right-hand column, uh, is the channels that you're going to have to be aware of, that you have to keep an eye on, um, that you're going to have to take into account when you start building this panel. You also want to be aware of what you assign to those channels if you choose to, because it can start to uh, create issues with fluorescent proteins in your panel. So I'm going to take you over to the uh, panel builder item that we have and show you how I would have constructed this uh, for you guys to use later on. So let's go ahead and get started with panel construction. You can visit biolegend.com. Uh, go ahead and go to web tools and hit multicolor panel selector here. Now you can start by clicking individual floors on the left, or you can check off a laser um, to set off all the floors that are excited by that particular laser. 
Uh, in this case, you can choose reactivity. We're going with a mouse panel here. And you can see that the zombies corresponding to the violet laser are also checked off when we hit this uh, select all button. So we're going to make sure we remove the floors that are interfered with due to those fluorescent proteins, your BV510 and 570, FITC, uh, PE, PERCP, PERCP 5.5. Getting rid of all those guys here, so it actually limits what you can do. Now, uh, you go ahead and input markers that you want on the right here. Make sure you select it from the drop down list, otherwise, you'll get this little error message here, this little explanation, exclamation point. Um, you do have to select it from the list, so go ahead and make sure you do that. So you got CD45.1 here. Uh, the next marker was CD90.2. And last but not least, CD25. So it's actually a relatively small panel. Uh, oh, sometimes you do have to make sure you double click there to make sure the actual marker pops up. And you go ahead and hit Find Products. Uh, short reminder because these are fluorescent proteins, all fluorescent proteins are excited by those shorter wavelengths. So they can create some spillover off of that 405 nanometer laser or the violet laser. Products will pop down here. You'll see brightnesses of the corresponding floor, so you can assign accordingly. Uh, check, marks in, check marks indicate products. And you can see emission spectra is here. Handy tool. Click out of that. And uh, at the bottom here, you can see the different live dead viability dyes we offer. They're all titled zombie. We're picking uh, APC size 7 equivalent here, zombie near infrared. Uh, just because it gets rid of two birds with one stone, that floor can be particularly dim sometimes, uh, APC size 7 that is. Uh, CD25, we're going to go ahead and pick PE size 7 just because it typically needs something very bright uh, and that is a better choice there. The other markers um, you can see are grayed out there. If you were to choose two floors in the same channel, you'll get a message saying, hey, you've already got this in your uh, panel, are you sure you want it? So we're clicking out of that. CD45.1, uh, we're actually going to assign a BV650. Uh, and CD90.2, we're going to assign a BV785. Now, these two markers aren't particularly dim. They're okay with sort of these mid-range to semi-bright floors. So, uh, okay choices here considering how restricted we are. Now, the customer also wanted to make a lineage cocktail added in, originally on PE, but because PE can be assaulted here by the DS Red and possibly by the GFP. We're going to go ahead and put it on APC instead. Uh, that's a separate cocktail that they're going to find for this uh, setup here. Now, once you've got all your uh, selections made, you can preview products down here. Take a look at the uh, spectra. Uh, excuse me, the staining profiles. A little additional information here. You can remove it from your panel by clicking that X button, and we're going to go ahead and add it back in here. And here's another shortcut while you're interested in the product. You can hit Preview Product to bring up a pop-up, taking you directly to the product web page, uh, shows you pricing, uh, data, all that kind of good stuff. So once your panel's set, uh, you have additional options here. The Save Panel option only comes up once your panel is completely filled out. Then you can bookmark it. You can also email it uh, you know, to a colleague or send it to tech. In fact, this is how tech will generally send you an email with your panel constructed so you can see uh, what we've chosen and selected. So uh, that about wraps it up actually. It's a pretty short panel here. You can have instructions here. Uh, it's, it's a relatively easy one, this one. Not too bad, not too many colors. You just have to be aware of what you can't use due to the fluorescent proteins in your panel. Uh, otherwise that's it. We hope you enjoyed this first uh, sort of tutorial through panel construction and do hope you come back. All right, so now that you've figured out uh, what to do with this panel, you can see our full layout here. Uh, this is what we finally constructed for them. Uh, and you can also see this little image right here, which hopefully represents that you've gained some knowledge and understanding throughout this procedure. Uh, if you have a panel that you specifically want help on, feel free to contact us. It is a completely free of charge service, and we're more than happy to do it for you. Uh, you can do it one of two ways. You can either click on this link here, to get to uh, a panel submission item that'll let us know specifically what you want to do. Alternatively, you can email us at techserve at uh, Again, free of charge. All we ask is that you provide us with a few details, specifically, number one, um, your lasers and filters on the machine. Just because a lot of people say, hey, I've got an LSR2, that doesn't necessarily explain to us everything that you're capable of uh, with your machine.
people? Uh, because a lot of machines have different filters, particularly the ones for the violet laser. Um, there's a lot of variability that can occur there, so we like to know all the filters that are possible, uh, and that's why we need more details from you. Number two, we'd like to know what your plan of analysis is. For example, if you're looking at T-regs, you might gate on CD4 first, and then look at CD25 versus FOXP3. Uh, so this lets us know which markers are going to be compared together in a bivariate. Um, so we know which floors we need to avoid putting against one another when you're making that kind of data comparison. So that basically wraps up our very first uh, tutorial that we're giving here. Feel free to check in every month as we'll continue to update this. You can look at the links below in the description for anything you might have missed during the video. And definitely subscribe to our channel so you can continue to get good content like this from us. So thanks for your time, and we hope to see you again next month.